Hello, hello, and welcome back to Lightning Health. Today, I'm going to be talking to y'all about how I fixed my low back problems. Obviously, I'm not a doctor, but I wish that I would have had someone talk to me about simple exercises they did to heal their lower back instead of me having to go to four chiropractors and three physical therapists have to go to YouTube to piece together how to fix myself. So, here we are. I'm hoping this can be a money and time saver for you, and the good news is that if these exercises don't necessarily fix your lower back, they're still really good for everyone to be doing. 50% of Americans say that they have low back problems. 50%. I felt like I was doing everything right to strengthen my back. You know, as a CrossFitter, you think you're doing everything right and you're invincible. But that ended very quickly one day, about three years ago, when I made the decision that I wanted to do more competitions. And I pushed myself just a little too hard on back squat. So, here's the video. Your coffee. Honestly, it doesn't even look too bad. I've always had a tough time squatting, but this day actually felt pretty good, and it was really downhill from here. The next morning, I rolled over in bed, and the pain in my lower back was sharp. I was used to my back being sore from deadlifting, but this was different. This was the sharp pain that I'd only really heard about. So, I went to the gym, because that's what you do when you are young and unafraid. And I tried to warm my back up. Deadlifting was fine, pressing was fine, rowing was fine, squatting was not. Something was definitely wrong, and over the next couple days, it kept getting worse and worse. Now, if I would have taken a month off from the gym, this injury totally could have gone away on its own. But, alas, I didn't, and it did not. So, I went to a chiropractor, and they did some stem therapy gave me a little massage, and then said I should get an MRI. I didn't really have the money for that, so I went to a physical therapist who gave me a little massage and told me that this wasn't a back problem. They definitely thought it was the sacroiliac joint or the SI joint. It was a little out of whack. So this was good, a step in the right direction. But once again, this PT didn't give me any tools or exercises at the gym to help me. I bit bopped around to a couple chiropractors and PTs, and some of them made me feel like I was getting a little better. You know, massage chairs, stem, adjustments, they all feel like great temporary fixes. But after six months of this, I was so done with having to go back week after week. Throughout this, I was playing doctor a bit and Googling and YouTubing how to fix your SI joint, and this was when I started my protocol for fixing myself. Now, this is so confusing, and to be honest with you, the explanation changed from doctor to doctor. <laughs> it was almost like this piece of medicine doesn't have a clear consensus yet, so I was really getting all types of information. Your sacrum is a triangular bone at the bottom of your lumbar spine. Your SI joints connect the sacrum to the ilium, right here and right here. When you have SI joint dysfunction, it basically means that one of your SI joints either moves too much or it doesn't move at all. The tricky part is that from what I've gathered, you want movement in your SI joint, but we don't want too much movement. For me, I was having a lot of movement, so I was on the prowl on YouTube to figure out how to align and stabilize my SI joint so that it didn't move quite so much when I exercised. Again, I look back on it and I'm kind of pissed. I don't understand why I couldn't get virtually any explanation of what was going on with my SI joint and that they left it up to me to figure this shit out, but what are you gonna do? So, this is what I found out. When I focused on doing a couple of things every single day, I could actually rehab my back and strengthen my stabilizer muscles so that my SI joint stopped hurting. We're gonna go through them now. Okay, first movement. Lay on your back with your knees up to the sky. From here, I'm going to take my right hand and put it in front of my knee, my left hand and put it on top of my knee. From here, I'm going to pull with my right hand and push with my left hand. As I'm doing that, I'm going to resist with my knees. And this is a very active position for five, four, three, two, one, and relax. We're gonna do this five times for five seconds each. Five, four, three, two, 
want to relax, I can feel my SI joint trying to connect, trying to realign. Five, four, three, two, one. You're gonna do that two more times. And we're gonna switch sides. Let's try it with the other side. Right hand on top of your knee, left hand in front of your knee. Five, four, three, two, one. Relax. Really trying to resist with your knees. Five, four, three, two, one, and relax. The thing about this movement is that you'll usually find that you'll feel this tugging on one side and not the other. And from what I've researched, this is totally normal. The second and third movements are exercises that I do literally every single day. And they're pretty surprising to a lot of people. The biggest kind of like mind blown conclusion that I came to was that my glutes were not strong enough to stabilize my hips and low back. And when I learned how to activate and engage my glutes, this was the real recovery exercise that allowed me to get back into squatting and get back to the gym with no pain. So first thing, I'd strongly recommend getting some kind of band to put around your knees. It honestly doesn't need to be super strong, but the cloth elastic ones are really nice so they don't pull out your leg hair. So for example, this band is a little too thick for me, but we're gonna use it just for today's purposes. So we are going to put that band around our knees. Find some tension on that band. Find our quarter squat position. And then from here, we're going to pigeon toe our toes in and give me 10 waddles forward. Really driving those knees out. And then rest. Quarter squat position, 10 waddles back. Rest. 10 waddles to the right. The lower you go, the more you're gonna feel it in your glutes and your lower back. And then 10 waddles to the left. Whenever I have my clients do this, they want to have some knee valgus or knee cave-in. And just because our toes are pigeon-toed does not mean that we want that. We still want our knees trying to track out over our toes. The last exercise I did was virtually any single leg glute work. I could do box step-ups or step-downs, I could do lunges, but my favorite to really warm up my glutes and stabilize my SI joint was to do some weighted single leg glute bridges. 3 by 10 per leg and I was good to go. So for those weighted single leg glute bridges, we can grab a dumbbell, place it on our hips, lean back, one foot is going to be up in the sky, hold onto that dumbbell onto your hips, one foot comes up, drive through the heel, really squeeze that right glute, think slow on the way down, fast on the way up. Once you do 10, you can switch legs. And you're gonna do three sets of that. When I started doing these exercises, three sets of five per side SI joint stabilizers, 10 per direction banded shuffles, and 10 per leg single leg glute bridges, I was able to squat heavy again in a matter of weeks. My symptoms were gone in a matter of months. And the key for me was really figuring out how to engage my glutes. There's a reason why I do so many glute videos because I find glute health as being one of the most important things you can work on to keep yourself healthy. If you're interested in trying one of my glute videos, I'll link it here. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked this video, don't forget to follow, like, subscribe, and leave me a comment below. I hope these exercises bring you some relief to your lower back pain. I will see you next time.